Okay, hello people of YouTube. Those of you trying to count sheep, you've come to the right place. Especially if you're trying to count sheep. Some of you may be trying to build an airplane. Uh, very exciting part that we're starting on here. This is the tail cone. Alright. Uh, very excited to finally get to this portion of the build. Although I will say I'm now... Mm, a uh, little bit over halfway through the build of the tail cone and have found out the hard way that I am not as good as I thought I was at bucking rivets. But anyways, you start out with the horizontal stabilizer attach. Um, we'll call them bars. Uh, you see them moving around and then the longerons, of course. Uh, lots of work to deburr the longerons. Um, I find that that 3M wheel helps a whole lot. Really makes light work of deburring the edges, as you can see right there. Um, easy peasy stuff to start off with. Deburr, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, of course, everybody's favorite part, which is the wang part. Um, it's in the plans, or it's in chapter 5 of the plans. Maybe it's also in the start of the tail cone plans there, but, uh, yeah, there it is. See me going after the, uh, pieces with that rubber mallet there. Um, you start to build some brackets, um, and then it's pretty much right on to the bulkheads. Um... To really, this was like probably one of the most fun parts for me personally, uh, assembling these bulkheads, especially if you have a squeezer. Oh man, those things make life so easy. They make your rivets look really good. You feel really good about what you're doing. I think I say that now because my rivets, some of my rivets on the tail cone are pretty trashy. Uh, I think I've drilled out probably a tenth of the rivets that I attempt to set on my own and probably one one hundredth that I set with people helping me. Um, I find that a five-year-old does not exactly have the uh, bucking technique needed to drive rivets so I have to wait for more adult help. Uh, I have no idea where I've wandered off to here, but we shall enjoy watching the wind blow around some paper towels. Okay, so again, bulkheads, still putting them together. This is the very aft bulkhead of the tail cone that I'm doing right now. Um, I don't... Let's see, That that looks like the second to the aft bulkhead there. I think it's like one four one zero, one four one one and one four one two. That looks like one two right there. Um you can see the much, much thicker tail cone skin sitting on the opposite side of the table, right behind that C frame D R D D two dimpler. That sucker's thick. Uh just trying to get dimples into it was um, it wasn't a task, but it was, you, you definitely needed more leverage than usual. Uh, again, lots of deburring, which I usually try to shut the camera off for, but there it is. More deburring. And then at some point in time, I start to scuff, prime, and, uh, you need to, you have to attach the uh, horizontal stabilizer bars to that bulkhead in particular right there. And then there's also a backing to it, which you can see at the very bottom of the camera angle there. Um, the brackets that I made on the bandsaw are already primed and sitting there in the middle of the table. And for the most part, this was all easy peasy stuff uh, that I really did thoroughly enjoy. There it is. There's the brackets. 
and the aft bulkhead beams, if you will. Um, really nothing to note in this section that I can think of. Coming up here in a couple of minutes, there's going to be a cable bracket of which the plans forget to tell you to dimple on the bottom. And that pretty thoroughly kicked my butt. Here's the forward bulkheads. And then magically they're deburred and primed because everybody's seen that a million times. Um, yeah, not a whole lot to say here. I'm just more or less waiting and interested to get into the to the bracket to hopefully save somebody a little bit of time and not make the mistakes I did. Oh, there's the bell crank ribs. Those were those were fun to put together. They come with um there's a angle um that you need to put on the top of it and that that angle will once riveted with uh four seventy rivets really makes those bulkheads nice and strong. And then there's I'm right now I'm messing with the front bulkhead. But shortly, uh, you'll see that uh, those bell crank bulkheads get the angles riveted onto them. And then um, I'm going to make a completely separate video. Uh, at a certain point in time, I figured I better get the yaw bracket on because I've seen a lot of people struggle with the yaw brackets. And... You do your own research. I'm going to put on a yaw servo. Um, I hear a lot of people say it's not needed. The tail's big enough. It doesn't really yaw too much, so it's not a necessary thing. And then I've seen a few people say that they've flown both one with it and one without it, and the ride is definitely smoother with a yaw servo to help uh, in turbulent type situations and even if it makes the ride one percent smoother I'm gonna install it so I, I mean not that seven hundred and fifty dollars to spend on a servo is anything to scoff at or nor is the hundred dollars for the bracket nor is the extra two hundred dollars to run a the wiring to it etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean it all adds up but I'm still gonna install it if it makes the ride better and for the instrument panel, I want to do the, uh, I believe it's like the 507 for the yaw, for the Garmin yaw, or Garmin autopilot control center. And that's got a yaw dampening button on it, which is essentially useless if you don't have a yaw servo. Uh, here I'm prepping the bottom skin. Um... This was, uh, it's just really interesting to see the way that Vans builds in their, you know, the technology to what they're doing. There's essentially a J channel built into the skin, which is super cool. Oh, and then of course, dimpling with the kids. It's, I've found it's the one thing that is, that the kids can do and in, they seem to enjoy doing. Uh, that and small hands are great for loading rivets into a skin. So that's fun. So here I'm probably prepping the prime. I found one J channel that I had completely forgotten to get down and dimple. And maybe you'll see me go back and do that. But anyways, we're on to riveting. This is the very start of riveting the bottom skin. And as you can see, one out of ten rivets, you'll see me break out the drill and I'll be drilling the top, which is, in fact, the bottom. It is what it is, but, uh, man, I, I, uh, it'd be nice to have two people at certain points in time.
later on after this video the next one will have me and a friend putting in some rivets and it goes a lot smoother with two people man when you can just worry about the gun or just worry about that bar whew, your accuracy gets a lot better for sure um yeah so for the most part i think the bell crank ribs are done the um the j channels there's one that runs full length and then there's two that run uh, two-thirds of the length those are done now uh, and then it's uh, for the most part getting the ribs on all of it I did by myself but you can see this one in particular I think I had to drill out three or four times you get really good at drilling them out and not having to upsize uh, I think there's probably three or four on the bottom where I drilled out and Either they fell over so hard or I drilled them out in such a way that I had to take another 30 drill, a number 30 drill bit, drill into the hole and then upsize them. So that sucks. And it's very, very shortly we're going to get to that bracket that they, there it is, that they did not tell me to dimple. So the bottom flange there, it's not called out anywhere in the plans to dimple that bottom flange. And I couldn't figure out why I was getting a gap. And then it hit me. That flange is not dimpled with the skin and that J channel. The, so the skin is at the very bottom. The J channel sits on the skin. And then that flange is on top. Well, I riveted it. Couldn't understand why the flange looked the way it did. Then realized it's not dimpled. So I put it out on Facebook. Hey, is this quote unquote captured? And Vans themselves reached out on Facebook and said, no, it's not. So then I called the mothership. I said, hey, it's not quite captured. What should I do? And the guy said, well, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it, but you could think about using close quarter rivets, or sorry, close quarter dimples, which is exactly what these are. So essentially, that's what I did is I put one side on one, one side on the other. I used the steel nail there. I didn't use the copper because those have a tendency to snap, especially when you're trying to squeeze three structures. And this is not flush, but believe me, when I went to go pull it, it was flush. And so there's the other side is underneath, and you're squeezing three structures together in hopes that you dimple the last structure and here's my final product it is indeed flush and captured by the rivet um total pain and van said yeah well you can when i called them and talked with the, the person themselves they said yeah you can leave it or you can try and do the close quarters see if you can get it to pull and dimple and luckily i was able to um, going back to it, uh, doing the ribs for the most part on the bottom, and then um, the bell cranks, and after that, that is, um, that's where I'm going to essentially stop this video, and I will have another video coming out soon of the yaw bracket and it's not really doing the yaw bracket but it's showing why the yaw bracket is such a pain to install and why this is pretty much the prime time to install it and of course I walked away somewhere uh, you see the side skins I'm just prepping the side skins right now with their J channels and yeah anyways I'll let this video close out Hopefully somebody gets something from it, and hopefully there's a few people out there that are able to dimple that flange before it completely kills you and you have to use the close quarter dies. See you on the next video.